Series 1, Episode 1, Avoid the Bonk, Why It Is Important to Understand Carbohydrates. Hi, welcome to Dr. Adrift, and welcome to the Carbohydrate series of podcasts. In this episode, I want to explain why it is important to understand carbohydrates, and why I think you should listen to this series. Carbohydrates are one of the main macronutrients used for energy. Understanding how the body digests, utilises and stores carbohydrates is fundamental and if understood can significantly impact your likelihood of achieving your fitness goals. Getting it right will help optimise your training, performance and recovery. Getting it wrong can lead to suboptimal performances and in some cases devastating consequences. One consequence is bonking. Yeah, I said it, bonking. This is a term used by cyclists. Um, Marathon runners refer to it as hitting the wall. I probably wouldn't encourage you to search for bonking online, but I would have a look at athletes who are hitting the wall in marathons. You will see athletes who are unable to walk, um, sometimes even crawling along the ground, as well as being sometimes disorientated, confused, and even not really making much sense or not making really good decisions. So what is going on here and what physiological explanations do we have for this phenomenon? Essentially, this occurs when your body has depleted its carbohydrate stores and you're running on empty. As a result, the blood sugar level drops, which can lead to a clinical condition called hypoglycemia. Hypo means low. Glyce refers to the six carbon molecule sugar, glucose. And emia refers to blood. What these athletes are experiencing is the physiological effects of hypoglycemia or low sugar levels. It affects both muscles and the brain. Exercise will feel significantly more challenging. Muscle performance will be compromised. Your legs will feel like jelly. You may be even shaking, finding the simplest of movements an impossible task. As your body is essentially shouting, stop, stop, stop. You push me too hard, I need energy. The effects on the brain lead to symptoms which may start off as hunger and progress to nausea, dizziness, disorientation, and more severely, loss of consciousness or even seizures. Cognitive decision-making can also be compromised, potentially leading to accidents. The reason the human brain is so vulnerable to drops in sugar levels is because it can't store carbohydrates. It is dependent on a readily available supply from the blood, which crosses something called the blood-brain barrier. If a constant supply of blood glucose doesn't reach the brain, you will become unconscious. Carbohydrates are stored in the muscles and liver in the form of glycogen. With intense aerobic exercise, a person's stores can become depleted within 60 to 90 minutes. As carbohydrate stores get increasingly depleted, the body's metabolism will switch from a carbohydrate currency to more dependence on fat and protein metabolism for supply of energy. Both fats and proteins are broken down to products that can be used by the liver to produce glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis. Fat stores are broken down and muscle utilize a type of fat called fatty acids as an energy source to try and conserve glucose, trying to ensure that blood glucose is available for the brain. So if you're a cyclist and want to avoid bonking, or you're a runner and don't want to hit that wall, understanding what to eat, how frequently to eat, and what amount is really important to avoid such a situation. These are just some of the questions I want to address during this podcast series. The factors that will determine when an athlete reaches the threshold of performance limiting depletion of their glycogen stores is firstly, how much glycogen is stored in the liver and muscles, and secondly, how quickly it's used during intense aerobic physical activity. Successful endurance runners need to be energy efficient. They need efficient running biomechanics and large aerobic capacities. The less oxygen an athlete needs for a given running speed, something referred to as oxygen cost, the more efficient the athlete is with utilisation of their glycogen stores. 
These factors are both genetic and environmental. Therefore, targeted training regimes can improve energy efficiency. The second requirement that successful endurance athletes have is they store enough glycogen in their muscles and liver to get them to the end of the event without having depletion. The likelihood of depletion can be reduced by strategies to maximise and increase an athlete's stores in preparation period before an event. Carbohydrate loading is one such strategy that I will discuss in this series. Carbohydrate loading is the intentional modification of an athlete's carbohydrate intake and training regime in the time period leading up to the event. The aim is to maximise pre-race glycogen stores and improve performance. An athlete's nutritional consumption during an event will also influence rate of glycogen store depletion. For example, if an athlete regularly refuels during the event, that ingested carbohydrate can be used as energy and slow depletion of the stores, avoiding hitting that wall. However, what to eat, how much, and how frequently to refuel are difficult questions. Getting it wrong can cause problems. I will go on to discuss such topics in this series. Understanding carbohydrate metabolism will also help you avoid injury. If you have prolonged periods of persistent suboptimal calorie intake, for example, over weeks to months, this will cause an imbalance between energy consumption versus expenditure, shifting the body's metabolic profile. Having energy intake too low will put the body into a catabolic state. This means the body doesn't have enough energy to meet its functions to sustain life and goes into a starvation state or an emergency mode. The body will resort to trying to make up for the calorie deficit by breaking down muscle proteins to amino acids. This metabolic state can only be sustained for a finite time before complications will occur. The amino acids derived from muscle will be used by the liver to produce glucose via the process of gluconeogenesis. The supply of glucose to the brain is paramount, and the body does this at the expense of muscle health. The risk of soft tissue injuries like muscle tears and ruptured tendons will be dramatically increased if loaded during training. These injuries can be devastating and best avoided with sensible dietary food plans, which include appropriate calories in the form of high-quality carbohydrates and proteins. Understanding what types of carbohydrates are present in what foods will allow you to choose the appropriate carbohydrates to meet the needs of your daily activities. For example, your activity levels may fluctuate due to work or family commitments and understanding how to modify your diet will empower you to make appropriate adjustments. If your training goal is to lose weight, then eating the wrong carbohydrates and in the wrong quantities can significantly reduce the likelihood of desired outcomes. Too many calories will lead to weight gain. Too little will potentially increase the risk of injury. Obviously, to lose weight, net body energy expenditure needs to be greater than intake. However, the art is having a diet and exercise regime that promotes breakdown of fat stores, but avoids muscle protein breakdown, reducing the risk of muscle or soft tissue injuries. I look forward to discussing exercise and nutritional plans to help anyone who wants to lose weight safely and avoid dietary deficiencies. Poor dietary choices can lead to health conditions such as obesity, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, hypertension and ischemic heart disease. I want this channel to be useful for everyone no matter what their current fitness and health is. You don't have to be an athlete to get benefit from the information on this channel. You may be someone who is starting an exercise and fitness plan for the first time and wants some help and guidance. Good luck to everyone, no matter what your fitness goal is. All the best. Thanks for listening and I hope you enjoy the Carbohydrate podcast series. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and feel free to ask any questions in the comments below.